back on the sculpture. Not much talking, gonna bring up to speed. Back from Black Dog, got all the parts that, or a lot of the parts that we're gonna incorporate into this ribbon. Uh, this ribbon is going to wrap around the existing helical structure in the opposite direction. So this goes that way, the other one will go that way. Uh, the ribbon will be made of two pieces of either square or round bar, solid, to make up either side and be filled in with parts, bolts, nuts, tools, gadgets, frames, all this stuff. Interesting design element, but that's what they want, so that's what they're gonna get. I just gotta figure out how to do it, and here's my plan so far. I'm gonna use this PEX piping to map out the ribbon in this fashion. I know that my ribbon makes one and a half complete rotations, whereas this makes one complete rotation, which makes the math pretty easy. So if it's 50% more rotations over the span, that means you can divide this ribbon into thirds. The first two thirds of the height of the ribbon, it makes a complete rotation, leaving room for another half rotation at the top. So that helps a lot because it allows me to map out where everything's gonna go. I'm gonna make standoffs to hold the ribbon probably make it free form in place. Need to figure out how big. Uh, the ribbon itself, the width is gonna be dictated by some of the elements I want to incorporate. So far the bigger ones are these interesting bobs from Black Dog. Everything else can be cut up and welded in. But yeah, um, gonna do some math with this to figure out how much material I need to order for the ribbon and then get started. Enough talking, let's do. All right, so quick update. I've mapped out a bunch of points on the helix. And <clears throat> what I need now is, you know, it'd be very easy to map out the ribbon if this was still a cylinder, but obviously it's not. But it still has cylindrical qualities, i.e these parts are still curved and shaped like a cylinder. <clears throat> so my critical heights are four feet and eight feet. Because at four feet, the ribbon makes 180 degrees. At eight feet, the ribbon makes 360 degrees. And at 12 feet, the very top, of course, it makes 540. Uh, so those heights are important. So what I wanna do is put a ring at four feet and a ring at eight feet, just to help me line things up. What I'm gonna do is use Steve's homemade roller, which is made out of a, a machine vise wooden platform and a handmade crank. What this is gonna allow me to do is to roll this one inch flat bar that I've got laying around into a 30 inch ring that I can then clamp on this helix at four feet and eight feet to help me identify where the ribbon's gonna land. But uh, yeah, back to the montage. Sorry if you couldn't see that happen with the GoPro, but I just wanted to get carried away. So, you know, use that thing to roll this into a circle. It happened really fast. Um, but now it, the circle is the same diameter as the outside of this. You know, I came up a little short, but I, this was, I kind of got lucky because I didn't cut this piece. I just had it left over. <clears throat> so what this will help me accomplish is, you know, when I have my ribbon going this way, I'm gonna have to have reference points that are otherwise floating in the middle of nowhere. So this helps me establish a reference point in an area where I wouldn't otherwise have a reference point. So because, you know, I'm gonna start there and the first four feet needs to do 180, I might land here, but there's a chance one of my reference points is gonna land on this ring and not on the helix. So, yeah. That's my thought process there. Anytime you can help yourself find data points in three-dimensional space, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. A lot of guesswork, and I don't like guesswork. People don't pay me for guesswork, unless it's an educated guess. But I didn't finish college, so take that what you will. So yeah, I think I'm gonna call it for the day, and as in the morning, I will place a steel order. We'll go pick it up. We'll start, we'll make our standoffs and uh, start making the ribbon. I'm excited because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe this week. 
Mm, we'll see. See you soon. All right, I'm gonna go make some standoffs for the ribbon and uh, they're gonna be two pieces of metal with plates in between that will have four bolt holes so that I can hold the ribbon on. Right? Exactly. I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> Walker can't hear anything. Uh, but being that I can't really work and think with a camera in my hand, I'm gonna go chest mount. I'm gonna go chest mount for this one. So sorry if it sucks, but I have to be able to improvise. I don't wanna think about camera angles. Love you. basically what I'm thinking for the standoff so it's removable these two plates will have holes in them I'm just using them as an example right now to the plasma cutter away <laughs> these came out nice so two and a half inch plate these will bolt together. I'm gonna clean them up. All right, so here's half the material I need for all the standoffs. There'll be four standoffs. This will make two standoffs, and now I'm gonna TIG weld them together. Basically, this, two of these, and then that. It's essentially what I'm building, and then you know, one half will stay with the sculpture, the other half will stay with the ribbon. Hello, woke up sick this morning. I'm not talking, you just watch me work.
So here's my loose math on how to build the ribbon. Cause now I gotta make those crossbars that go on the standoffs. So I just got some threaded rod and set it here on the table. I know my angle, which is slightly shallower than the 55 that I used over there on that helix, because this is making more rotations and it's a fine thread, if you will. So, and this is the biggest piece I want to incorporate in the ribbon, this cool hub of sorts. And so, if I put both of these threaded rods at 50 degrees and get it as tight as I can to this, it gives me a measurement here of about 14 and a half inches. So, if I cut, I'll explain that further. If I cut, four 14 and a half inch pieces that get welded onto here, this way, or better yet, something to show you. That way, whoops, that way, then uh, the helix will touch both sides. So yeah, simple math. Simple math, practical math. God, I'm still not better. I'm dead tired after three hours of real work. Don't like it. Go home, hot shower, some vitamin D, lots of water, some tea. But try to cut those pieces, weld them on, and then that'll be it for today. I still can't talk really well, but we're going to try to make this uh, ribbon happen. to weld it when I get it up there. Dad's on the way to pick up the dogs. I'm gonna ask his help on this. Cause I don't think I can do this by myself. Dad's here. Hey everybody. Reinforcement. Back in. Called in the big guns. Okay. So it'll go, it'll go to the left side of that standoff over there. Yep. Had an epiphany. Yeah, so these are one of the, the small bolts that we're using, or Tay's using to put this thing together. But, you know, the whole 
ribbon has to be concentric. So here's your here's your your your, your gauge. No you just stick that in there like that, and then and then you do that every <laughs> three or four feet. That's, you got a bump up. That's great. Here, I was worried they'd be too heavy and bulky. But. And then you see, you pull this guy down and, or this guy up, and right. And that's your, and that, that'll get the, the gauge or the distance between everything's concentric. Oh, that's great. That's it. I mean, it's not like you can put a small bolt in here. I mean, you no. gotta have a real bolt. You can see this from oh, a distance. What is that? Inch and a quarter? Right, it's big, inch and a half. Right? Yeah. Well, there you go. Destiny. You're welcome. Destiny. <laughs> you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, I still got it. Yeah. The king of, hey, put this here. Yeah. Well, it's art, you know? It's, it's, yeah. There's no rules, really, except, you know, you can't defy gravity. Mm -mm. Uh, if you could, we'd, we'd be on our own motor yacht in Tahiti <laughs> right now. <laughs> Y'all ready to go? Let's go. go with Grandpa? You have their... Uh... Thanks for the assist. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to cut in here, in the middle of this time lapse. Just say how pleasing this is and how ridiculous this is. I'm loving this, I'm having so much fun. Let me show you how it's going. So, you know, this whole time I was thinking, damn, these giant bolts are so heavy and um, they're gonna weigh the ribbon down. It's gonna make things way too complicated. I don't know how to incorporate them. Turns out, once we lay everything out, they are the perfect, perfect length. I mean, I didn't even plan that, but they fit perfectly in here. As I'm welding them in, it's starting to make this ribbon look uniform. But I'm just so, <laughs> so pleased with how this is coming out. This is gonna look bizarre. And, uh, you know, just a refresher, just a refresher. That's what we're building. And this is how it's coming. So I, I think it's gonna work. This is up there with the most crazy thing I've ever built. And I love that I'm doing it in my new shop under my name. I'm gonna be damn proud of this thing when it's done. So this is working great. It's hilarious. Uh, it's the weirdest thing I've ever built and uh, so far. And yeah, so I'm gonna keep going with these, these big bolts. Then that'll bring me into about lunchtime and then we'll start filling in between the bolts with all this stuff. So I'm actually gonna bring you along with this one. So I got this really cool wrench and it fits perfectly in between two of these bolts. But if you look, the wrench is straight and this thing's curved obviously. So I'm gonna try to impart a curve in this flat wrench. So I've got this off cut piece of pipe. I think I'm gonna, once I get this middle part red hot, I'm gonna press it against here and that'll give it a nice arc. This is actually tighter than the radius I need. So I won't go all the way, but it'll be a good starting point. This is all in theory. I'm not a blacksmith. I've done a fair bit of metal shaping, but um, as I'm sure you are about to tell, I am no expert. It's just art, man. Just having fun making art. Cha, dude.
Sorry, I'll show you in a bit. That's what we did. It's a curved wrench. So there we go. This, this is why I love having a CNC plasma cutter. Jesus. Because I can prototype parts like this. So this will go here, bolt in, share those bolt holes, and allow me to lift the tree up into place. That is awesome. Awesome. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna clean these up. So these are the, much like the standoffs, these are gonna get bolted together and that's gonna allow me to split the ribbon into two pieces and have it be able to bolt back together later. I'm gonna clean all this up uh, and then we'll get to welding it into the ribbon over there, making it two pieces. And um, yeah, final, final little bits and bobs, cleaning and grinding and and I gotta poke some holes in the bottom of that thing over there so that the water can drain out when it rains. And then I gotta pick the whole thing up and set it on a piece of cardboard or something so we can make a template for Cam and the guys over at Black Dog so where when they pour the concrete pad that it's gonna sit on, they know where to locate the bolts, the J bolts or whatever they're gonna use. Come along, let's do those things.
Okay, so rough fabrication is pretty much done, <clears throat> except for the treetop, but that has to happen after Black Dog rolls the uh, rebar so I can weld it to the collar. So now it's time to get this thing horizontal and then finish some things at the top, finish grinding some things up there, smoothing some things out, and welding on some loops for if we have to use guide wires to keep this thing from wobbling too much in the field. I'd rather weld them on now and not need them versus need them in the field and figure out, have to figure out some way to jerry, jerry rig it all. So we're gonna get this thing horizontal and then make a transport cradle of sorts for this thing so I could get it over to Black Dog. And I guess we'll just have to assemble it outside over there because it's too tall for my ceiling with the treetop on it. Um, they could fit it in their warehouse, I guess, but we'll see. That's their call. I don't really have to deal with that. So, onward and downward today.